How's it going everybody and thank you for joining me on Out of the Bow Throws. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and do the oil change on my 2010 RAV4. Uh, actually I have my son behind the camera helping me out so that he can kind of pay attention and figure out what we're doing here. So hopefully he'll be able to do this by himself pretty soon. Um, first things first, you're going to need an oil drain pan to catch all your used oil. You're going to need an oil filter. Now this one is a canister style so it actually goes inside of a container instead of just having its own casing that you just screw on and because of that I also need a, a special tool to open up the oil filter you're gonna need oil and make sure you get whatever's recommended for your car don't change it uh, I know a lot of people think as their car gets older they can start using thicker oil but the oil galleys themselves don't open up um, those stay the same size no matter how much wears on the engine so adding thicker oil can actually cause it to not pass through properly and I'm gonna go ahead and use a socket wrench but you probably want to go ahead and use a box end so that you don't over torque it uh, I've done it a couple of times so I try not to over tighten the drain pan bolt because if you do you can strip the inside and then you got to replace the entire oil pan I also do need it for the uh, canister style filter uh, wrench next thing you want to do is make sure before you start the oil change that you actually open the hood uh, for two reasons one you're gonna need access to the filler which is the cap over here on the top of your valve body uh, sometimes it's in different places but for the most part it's usually right on top of the head <clears throat> And then the second reason is because as long as this hood's open, uh, it's going to remind you to make sure you put oil in it because a lot of the complications that happen is a lot of people drain their oil, change the filter, and forget to put oil back into the car. And then they go ahead and start it up and you pretty much ruin the engine if you run it like that. So after that, we're going to go ahead and get to the bottom of the car here. So we're going to go ahead and put the drain pan underneath the car. So my, if you guys can see it, this is where my drain plug is and the filter for the canister is right over here. Now be careful when you guys do this, unless you've let your engine sit for a while because it is going to be hot. So we're going to go ahead and break this bolt, it's that easy, pull the pan right underneath it, and pretty much open this up and get your hand out of the way, if I can get it. Alright, so it is going to leak on me and probably burn me a bit here, so we're going to have some fun. There it goes. So you're going to let that fully drain out so that you don't have any spills anywhere. And one thing I did forget was to cap this off on the other side so it doesn't leak out. Now, because this is an SUV, it's a little bit higher off the ground, so I didn't have to use a jack in order to get to this. But on lower cars, usually your normal sedans, you're going to either have to go on ramps or jack up one side of the car so that you can actually get access to the bottom here. Another good thing to do while you're changing your oil or at least every other oil change would be to go ahead and change your air filter. I did already do that uh, a couple days ago, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how to do it, but I'm not actually going to change the filter this time. And we're pretty much just going to wait for it to kind of start dribbling out. As long as it's not pouring a stream, then we can go ahead and just cap the top off.
And as you can see, this is pretty black in here, so it was a good time to change this. And what'll actually happen is if you continue running your car without changing the oil, it'll start to kind of thicken up and then become almost like a sludge. So if you go too long, you'll end up burning it and it'll become very difficult for it to move freely through your engine. And now we just wait. <laughs> It's pretty much about on its way to be finished, so I'm going to hunt for the bolt here. Figure out where it's at. There it is. So it actually has fallen inside the little cup here, so we got to pull this out. It is extremely hot. <clears throat> uh, you guys might want to wear gloves while doing this because this actually is hazardous material. Uh, and has been recognized as causing health issues. Uh, so just as much as possible, go ahead and wear gloves. I unfortunately did not remember to do that. So I will just make sure I wash my hands afterwards. And we're still waiting. <laughs> and we're still going to have to drain some oil out of this filter as well. So... Um, there is a little bit of, of waiting with changing the oil. You're not working the entire time. So I probably can go ahead and start wrenching off the filter because my pan is big enough in order to um, let both of them drain into it. So we got this on here. And really you should be pushing on the wrench, but because of the angle I'm at, I'm not able to do that. Uh, make sure. Yeah, that should be the right way. We'll just kind of let both of these drain here for a minute before I completely drop the cap off just so it doesn't make a big giant splash.
Ow. There it goes. All right, so before I pull this pan out so that I can get the other filter out, I'm gonna go ahead and cap the drain pan off. So since this is a canister style here, it's just a paper filter that's going to go back inside of there. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and clean my hands real quick before I touch the new filter. Go ahead and keep it on there. Alright, just so we don't get a lot of used oil on anything here, I'll just clean my hands real quick. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and put the new filter in. like this got crushed slightly right here so we might have a little bit of some trouble trying to get this on oh there it goes all right so this here's the seal um, on this one it comes with a brand new one you don't have to be that close and there's also another o-ring that I seem to not know exactly where it goes yet So luckily it comes with instructions, so if you don't know, read them. <laughs> okay, so I see where that goes. So we'll go ahead and remove this. Kind of just peels off like most O-rings. You might have to use a flathead screwdriver or something. There we go. Pop the new one on just so it doesn't end up rupturing off the old one if you keep reusing it too many times. Now there was a step I skipped. You can actually go ahead and break this off. It's a little cap on the bottom I believe. Uh, in that way you can uh, drain it from the bottom but I'm not going to worry about that seeing as I already emptied it out. <clears throat> so we won't need the drain pan anymore, so I'm gonna get that out of the way. Okay, we'll wipe this down a bit. Now 
get back under the car. So as you can see, there was a little bit of oil that did end up hitting the floor. That's pretty normal. You might want to put down um, like pig mats or a drain, a larger drain can for older cars would work just to kind of keep your driveway clean. Once you already get oil on your driveway, uh, there are a couple of ways you can clean it up. You can use cat litter or you can go out and buy um, like spill cleaner. I know they make them for oil. You can pretty much pick it up at any auto parts store. So we're gonna go ahead and just wrench this back down till it's tight. See, on some oil filters, this whole thing would actually be the entire filter casing. So you would go ahead and remove this and then just put a new one on. But on this one, it does want you to change that paper filter inside of it. That should be as tight as it's gonna get. I don't want to wrench too hard on here. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, and then don't forget to retighten the drain pan plug all the way down. Otherwise, you'll leak from there. And remember, I'm gonna grab it like in the middle. If you are using a, a socket wrench just so you make sure you don't strip it because all the way down at the bottom you'll get too much torque on it so we're finished at the bottom of the car here and of course it looks like my uh wind skirts missing some screws like normal we'll have to replace those sometime all right and then we'll go ahead and come to the top of the car here and on this vehicle, it does give you two options of oil. There's 020 if you want to have the highest fuel economy. Uh, I don't feel too comfortable with that oil. So it gave me the option for 520, so that's what I'm going to end up using. And it uses a little bit more than four quarts. This is a five quart bottle here, so we're pretty much going to pour most of it in there and then check the dipsticks. So it'd be a good time for a funnel. Get my lovely locks out of the way. If you're not using a funnel, pour very slowly because it'll get air bubbles in here and kind of splash all over the place. And seeing as how the exhaust is so close, you'll end up, you could start a fire if you actually pour too much oil, but most of the time you're just gonna end up with some smoke and a weird smell while it's burning off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop right there. So it does look like I still have about a quart, so I've only put about four in there. But two things I wanna check before I finish it off is make sure there's no leaks coming from the bottom. That 
looks like everything's sealed pretty well. And I did get oil because the drain plan is so close to the exhaust. There is some oil on the exhaust down here at the bottom, so that will burn off, create a little bit of smoke until it's completely gone, and then I'll end up with some carbon residue I'll have to clean off here. So we're gonna wipe some of that down right now. Get the pan. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and pull the dipstick out here. And when you're doing this, if you can, I'm just using regular napkins here, but you want to use uh, a lintless uh, paper towel, usually shop towels, just because you don't want to get any lint into your system. And make sure you wipe it down the first time because it's not going to be accurate. So, it does look like I'm going to need a little bit more here. Just double check one more time. And what you're looking for is the oil to be in between these two dots right here. So this is your minimum line and this is your full line. Past this, you've got too much oil and below it, you need to add some. So as you can see, most of it's collecting here at the bottom. It does seem like there's a little bit on here, but I'm gonna add some more oil just to make sure. And I know it does take more than four quarts. Go ahead and stop there. All right, it does look like it's coming up high enough. And in fact, I may have hit that mark where I'm just slightly over that top dot. It's not too bad. You do want to try to be in between the two. Um, if I can remember what I did with my cap. Well, we'll cap the oil off first. There it is. Found it. Okay, and before we do the last touches here, this is where my air filter's at. So on this car here, there's two pins you'll go ahead and pop off. And then this whole thing actually pulls forward and lifts up. There's latches on the bottom and you can see I got the new air filter already in there. You'll just kind of slide it in. If you do need more room, you can always take your battery out um, and detach a couple of pieces like the hosing, slide that off and you can remove this whole thing. We'll just line the pins up in the back again. All right. Squish this bad boy down. And then you would have changed your air filter at that point. Uh, last step, just to make sure that everything's finished. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the engine over for about 30 seconds, if not less than that, and double check the dipstick one more time. So if you wanna just stay right here.
And the only reason to do that is just to make sure that everything gets through the system and you have oil in your oil filter at the bottom because it was dry. So again, we'll wipe this off. There it is. So as you can see, I'm right here, just below that line. So that's where I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And there you have it, you guys. You would have done your oil change on your car. Uh, the only things that you really need to know is just the locations of everything. Some places the drain plug is actually in a different location and the oil filters are in different locations. Uh, I know that like FJ Cruisers have the oil filter right on top and you would drain it down off the valve cover. Uh, my old Buick used to have an extension that would actually move the uh, filter over by the left tire, pretty similar to where it was here, but a little further out. Um, but other than that, every car is going to be slightly different, but for the most part, the procedure is exactly the same. So I hope you guys learned something, and I hope you learned something as well, Ben. All right, you guys, have a good day.